Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh everyone. I hope you're all doing well. Bismillah alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. So I just um, walked back from the masjid from the Valley Ranch Islamic Center and uh, pretty surreal to see the parking lot empty on Jum'ah but subhanAllah it's amazing how these things change uh, so quickly for us, right? And this idea of um, the quick sudden change of fortune, you know, the Prophet Sallallahu used to seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala min zawadi ni'matihi from the sudden uh, turn of, of, of events, the sudden turn of fortunes and blessings. And um, it's very humbling for us to be in this situation. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect everyone. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept the intention for the good deeds that we had planned to do. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to write them down for us fully. We ask Allah that this Jum'ah prayer that we had hoped to uh, fulfill today, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala write it down for us without any deficiency whatsoever uh, in its reward. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us for our inability. We ask Allah that everyone that had planned to do Umrah, that Allah accepts a full Umrah from them. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that everyone that wishes to uh, be able to have a successful Ramadan, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them that when they say, Allahumma balighna Ramadan, oh Allah allow us to see Ramadan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant the niyyah of hajj for everyone from now that intends to do hajj. We ask Allah to give them the full niyyah of hajj, the full intention of hajj rewarded to them. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy on any of our brothers and sisters that pass away anywhere that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them shahada. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect our elderly. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to use us in the service of those who are already vulnerable that will now be more vulnerable as a result of this. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to replace the losses of everybody financially, emotionally, whatever it may be with something greater in this life and the next. Allahumma ameen. Uh, with that being said, and I'll probably make this dua in the end, what I wanted to do was... Um, you know, allow for us an opportunity to at least go through some of the perspective. And subhanAllah, the title of the khutbah that, that I have is actually the one that I was intending to give, um, which was the things we took for granted. And I had imagined giving this khutbah in the masjid, right, about how this might be our last time being able to do Jum'ah here for some time, right? Or what if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't allow us to have tarawih prayer here? Um, and here I am doing this in my home office right now. So I want to connect a few things for us, inshallah ta'ala. And just to note from now, uh, and I'll repeat this again, this is not a replacement for Jum'ah. So please pray your Dhuhr prayer for Raqqa is complete, okay? This is just uh, sharing what I'd hope to share with, with the khutbah, inshallah, and to give that spiritual reminder, that tazkiyah, inshallah ta'ala, that we were looking for, um, perhaps in Jum'ah, as a, as a reminder. And Jum'ah is supposed to be a reminder. So I want to start with this point. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has all of these things that are destined for us that essentially flatten all sorts of difference in terms of status, in terms of health, in terms of wealth, in terms of whatever it may be. The ultimate, uh, the ultimate equalizer is death, right? Because when we die, it doesn't matter what we had in this world. It doesn't matter what's put on top of our graves. Ultimately, we all reside inside of our graves and our status is taken away from us. Our wealth is taken away from us. The praise of people is taken away from us. All of that is taken away from us. So it's the great equalizer, right? And that it puts us all in the exact same situation. Before death, there are all sorts of disproportionalities that exist. And people have blessings that are readily available to them that they take for granted. So for example, um, you know, I, I talked about this last year, subhanAllah, and a lot of people are, have probably forgotten with everything going on. We are exactly one year away from the Christchurch massacre, the massacre of our brothers and sisters in Christchurch. And I remember that being one of the heaviest Jumu'ahs that I'd given here. And then of course I was on a plane that same, that next day uh, to Christchurch, to New Zealand. Uh, and I remember the khutbah from last year, um, which was that why did the Christchurch massacre shake us up so much? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of them shahada and may Allah azawajal comfort their families. Why did, that, why did that shake us so much? It shook us for many reasons. One of them was that a lot of us who live in relatively uh, safe um, uh, countries, um, who live in, in easy circumstances and situations, 
you know, we've we've never had the thought in our minds of a bunch of people being killed in the masjid or, or having to fear for their lives going to the masjid. However, there are a lot of people that have gone out to their masajid, they're attempted to go out to masajid in Syria, in Gaza, in India right now, right? At the time, last year, this wasn't the situation. See, subhanAllah, how things have changed. The Uyghurs, so many different people who did not have the opportunity to go out to Jama'at in safety already that would have to worry about bombs falling on them. You hear about, you know, a bombing at a masjid in Afghanistan so frequently, right? Or in Iraq and these places that have been forgotten, Syria, Idlib. You look at the masajid, the destroyed, um, you know, pulpits and, and the minrets where people are calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These were things that were very usual for them, right? Where it was hard for them to go to the masjid. And then Christ Church happened last year. And there was this element of this isn't supposed to happen in New Zealand. This isn't supposed to happen in a safe country. This isn't supposed to happen in a Western nation. And a lot of us started to feel like, um, you know, we were left out, right? We were left out. And subhanAllah, you know, that happened, Christ Church happened, and suddenly an element of safety was taken away from us. And now you have to worry about this in the masjid. Our worst nightmare had come true. So what did that do? It equalized things to an extent. We're still not Idlib anywhere in the West. We're still not Gaza anywhere in the West. We're still not what's happening in India or with the Uyghurs anywhere here, right? But the, the, that, that vulnerability, a new vulnerability had been added to us and taken and took away something from us that before we had taken for granted, right? Which was that we could go to our mosques in peace. We could go to our masajid in peace. Those of you that are from other faith communities, you could go to your places of worship in peace, right? Like, and then all of these different things happened, right? And suddenly we don't have that anymore. Safety was taken away from us, or, or the, at least the the peace of mind of assured safety, right? Alhamdulillah, we've, we were still so much safer than different people, but the peace of mind of assured safety was taken away from us. Um, the idea of going to Umrah or Hajj, so you, you, you go to the next thing, right? If you live in a country and you have the means and your country's not restricted by quota, you don't have to worry about being at a certain age to be able to go to Umrah or Hajj. Planning Hajj and Umrah is a scheduling thing for you, right? Saving some money and scheduling, right? But you don't imagine not being able to get a visa, especially if you have, you know, the right passport or you have the right economic status. And subhanAllah, now that's being taken away. You know, the uh, the thing that doesn't necessarily have to have a, you know, a, 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 a you know, a, a particular type of status, but it was just something we used to do all the time. Being able to go to the masjid, being able to say salam alaikum to one another, being able to smile at one another, being able to uh, to pray with one another. Um, tarawih prayer, right? Who would have thought tarawih prayer, right, would be taken away from us? And so the, the point is, dear brothers and sisters, that these are things that we used to take for granted. And Ramadan is meant to be able to give us an appreciation for blessings that we often take for granted, right? When Ramadan comes, it, uh, it causes us to deprive ourselves of blessings that we regularly consume on a daily basis, right? So that we can have a greater appreciation for those blessings. So it's a lesson for us in the midst of having some of this taken away from us to think about those blessings and to say Alhamdulillah for them so that hopefully, you know, as soon as possible, when we get back to, to our ways of life, when we get back to our worship, our congregations, our communal activities, that we can appreciate them once again, right? That that we can we can really revel in them. Like think about how much now we're thinking about tarawih, right? And so if in a previous Ramadan, maybe I would have got lazy, I would have said, well, it's the Ramadan dip right now. Um, you know, I wasn't able to go to tarawih or I just didn't feel like it or I dragged my feet to the masjid. Now, now I have something, right? It, if I get to do tarawih and may Allah allow us to have as normal of a Ramadan as possible, Right. If, if I get it, we're going to value that tarawih so much more now. Maybe if I used to drag my feet to Jum'ah, right? Now, you know, for SubhanAllah, I had a man, 84 years old, uh, really broke my heart. He said that I haven't missed a Jum'ah in 60 years, not for travel or sickness. Can you imagine that? 60 years. You do the math of how many Jum'ahs that is, right? 60 years, he's never missed a Jum'ah. And he just doesn't know how to come to terms with being at home right now. Uh, because it's just so unheard of and, un, uh, you know, it, it's so inconceivable for him. Those people that would get there before the Adhan to make sure that the angels registered them, 
right? Because the Prophet ﷺ mentioned the angel's roll book that closes when the Imam says, Salaamu Alaikum. How are we going to be the next time Jama'ah opens up to us, inshallah ta'ala, and we're able to go back to our Jama'ah Salah? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow that to be sooner rather than later. And may Allah allow us to take that now with, with, with a greater degree of, of reverence, right? The ability to go and the ability to do these things with ease. How many people that wanted to go to Umrah or Hajj now, or people that have their Hajj in limbo now? What if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens that up for you, right? So uh, increase your niyyah right now, increase your intention right now. Be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all that he allowed us to do that we took for granted that other parts of the Muslim ummah did not have available to them in terms of just ibadah that now we're having to come to terms with. And use that to propel you, inshallah ta'ala, not just through this to look forward to when that gets restored back to normalcy bi'idhnillahi ta'ala, but use that to give you a greater appreciation for when it comes. So that's the first thing. Second thing is that obviously when equalizers come, it gives us an opportunity to develop empathy. And empathy is a ibadah. Developing empathy is an act of worship. And anytime you have an opportunity to feel what other people are feeling, um, it's a chance to not just appreciate the blessing that you had, but to activate you towards making sure that others have that blessing on a normal basis as well. So the increase of empathy is special in these moments, right? How do we increase our empathy? Thinking about our brothers and sisters that that you know have have lived through devastating circumstances you're at home praying Jum'ah, uh, or you know not praying Jum'ah. i gotta keep on clarifying you're at home praying dhuhr uh i'm at home praying dhuhr today i don't have to worry about a bomb falling on my house right now right and i pray that that doesn't become the case so that shouldn't just make me go alhamdulillah i don't have to worry about things that other people have to worry about it should make me think you know how do I how do I work make dua for and work for those people that do have to worry about those types of things, right? So the increase of empathy is is a ibadah in and of itself. It's an act of worship in and of itself. So there is the equalizer, there is the empathy and developing that empathy, and then the next two things that come after that naturally, shukur, it is gratitude. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا إِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَا أَزِيدَنَّكُمْ If you are grateful, I will increase you. Right now, people, you know, some people are going to be focused on thinking about the things that they've lost out on, right? Oh, I can't do this anymore. I can't do that anymore. You know, I'm not going to be able to go to this gathering or I had the special plan, right? Spring break uh, plans. I had the plan to be with this amount of family. I had, you know, instead of thinking about those things, that you don't have or that you've lost out on, say Alhamdulillah, say Alhamdulillah, say Alhamdulillah. All praises and thanks and glory are to Allah for what we still have, right? The the privileges that we still have. If, you know, the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, man asbaha, whoever wakes up with a roof over their heads, mu'afan fi jasadi, and, and, and with, with no major health issues, and uh, a meal for the day, then that person is like a person who has the entire world. I mean, you're like a king at that point or a queen, right? It's like you have everything in the world that you need. Say Alhamdulillah. Be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now is the time to intensely focus on those blessings, not to, uh, not to think about the things that we're missing out on. Think about those blessings. Let that gratitude increase and let that gratitude give you the perspective that's going to be needed, inshallah ta'ala to power you through these moments ahead. So equal the equalizer of, of sickness, right? And subhanAllah, you, you see now heads of state, right? That are not spared from sickness. Sickness makes no distinction, just like death makes no distinction. Uh, empathy, right? The growth of empathy, the growth of gratitude. The fourth one, the growth of service. Um, the people that are already vulnerable have just been made more vulnerable. Right. So the homeless that already had to worry about not having a rooftop over their heads now have to worry about getting this disease and no one even knowing about it. No one coming to their aid, not even knowing how to get tested. People that never had to worry about homelessness because they were making their check. Right. They were getting their hourly wages. They were able to make it day by day are now thinking about what it would be like to be homeless. Our elderly population have to think about things that they did not have to think about before. Those of us that care for them have to think about things that that, that we might not have thought about before. Uh, shukur is not just meant to make you, gratitude is not just meant to make you say Alhamdulillah, it's meant to activate you towards 
works of hamd, works of gratitude. I'malu ala Dawood al-Shukra. Work, O family of David, acts of gratitude. So right now we should be thinking about what are some things we can do, especially as this you know draws out. What are some unique service-oriented projects that we can develop, inshallah ta'ala, in our communities, in our, um, you know, in, in our places of worship, through our organizations, through our, through our groups, inshallah ta'ala, to where we're taking care of those that are really, really going to suffer even more in these moments. Um, and for those of you that are in that category, uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help you, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be of help to you. Right. I, I know that there are probably some of you that are watching this right now that are those people that, that are having to worry about if you can make rent, if you can do, you know, your basic things uh, next month. May Allah help you and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to come to your aid um, and, and activate those of us who don't have the dire situation that you might have. Uh, to be able to to be in your service with Nanahi Ta'ana. So let's think about uh, service inshallah Ta'ana and how we activate ourselves towards service. And then the last thing, the spiritual opportunities that we now have in front of us that we did not necessarily have before. You know, uh, anyone who's taken a, a, a class, I, I taught this class on Mukhtasar Min Hajj Al-Qasideen by Imam bin Qudam Rahimullah Ta'ala, which is a, a book of spirituality, summarizes a summary of Ihya Ulum al-Din by Imam al-Ghazali rahimahullah ta'ala. And it's really interesting because I was reflecting on the breakdown of, uh, of, of how they broke down the idea of the worship that comes, the unique opportunities of worship that come with being around people and the unique opportunities of worship that come with solitude. And they talked about the unique sins that come with being around people and the unique sins that can happen in solitude, right? So they actually broke down uh, the, the idea of mixing with the people and the idea of, uh, of, of spiritual uh, solitude, right? And what happens in those two. So let's start with the sins, right? Um, typically people that spend a lot of time alone, right? Shaitan can, can offer some sins to you, right? That you could do, uh, you know, when you're, when you're all by yourself. And that's what the Prophet Sallallahu said, when he was asked in the hadith of Thawban um, about Sifhum Lana Ya Rasulullah to explain or to describe the munafiqeen, to describe the hypocrites. And they are the people that either khalaw bi maharam Allah, when they're alone with the prohibitions, right? The haram, uh, that, that, that they consume those forms of haram. So be very, very smart about how you, uh, you, you conduct yourself, very, very careful about not letting shaitan take advantage of your idle time, right? Take advantage of your alone time. The second thing in, in terms of the sins of being alone, um, you know, is that when we're alone now, we're not really alone because <laughs> we still have these, right? So subhanAllah, I mean, you could engage in so many sins right now in terms of, uh, in terms of social media, just sitting around. You could waste your time watching things. You could waste your time, uh, you know, going through all of this stuff. And you could waste your time uh, getting involved in our ever, uh, you know, our, our, ever, our never ending uh, community fit and, and drama that all happen in the, the sphere of online, right? Don't do things that are going to be against you in this time now that you have alone and you're sitting on your phone and whatever it is. And you, could, you can engage in so much haram, watching haram, engaging haram, typing haram, uh, uh, following haram. Just try to make sure that you don't use this time to yourself, inshallah ta'ala, to be sinful, right? Uh, and the unique element of this social media uh, part of this is that it gives us access to sins and it gives us access to good. So think about the other side of this, inshallah. How can I listen to more lectures now? How can I, how can I grow my ilm, grow my knowledge, um, you know, uh, my knowledge base now that I have some time, inshallah ta'ala. How can I engage some of the helpful things that are online, inshallah ta'ala, right? So using that as well. Um, the potential for reading an amount of Qur'an every single day. What is your wirt? How much Qur'an are you going to read every day? You know, we're, we're about to get into that uh, that run run up to, that, to Ramadan where we start talking about, you know, don't wait until Ramadan to start reading Qur'an, Right. Uh, get used to the Qur'an in Sha'ban. Well, now you have a lot more time to read Qur'an. So think about how you can develop your wird, develop your daily recitation from now. How much salawat are you doing on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? It's the day and night of Friday. How much are you increasing salawat? 
reading Surah Al-Kahf. Just because you're not going to Jum'ah doesn't mean that the Sunnah of reading Al-Kahf is gone. Read Surah Al-Kahf today. Make sure that you don't let this Friday go without you finishing Surah Al-Kahf, right? Do those things now, the unique opportunities of individual ibadah that you have, and avoid the individual, uh, the sins that have now been more easily accessible to you. You've got a lot more time on your hands now where you could go through these things online with these devices and things of that sort. Spend more time on the opportunities that you have of dhikr, of remembrance, of recitation, less time on the more opportunity now you have to kill time by killing your heart with more sins that you would not do if you were busy out there and doing other things. And, you know, adding to that, if you're with your family now, subhanAllah, and those of you that that are going to have to go through this uh, quarantine for the most part um, without many people around you, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help you. May Allah azza wa jal fill your, your, your alone time with, uh, with, with great spiritual and emotional fulfillment. Those of us who, who have families around us, our spouses, our children, our parents, uh, those types of things, you know, the people around us that we typically don't give enough attention to, that we don't give enough time to. Uh, the Prophet wasallam taught us that in every moment that we spend with our families, whether it's a moment of intimacy between spouses or a moment of eating together or a moment of playing with our children or a moment of serving our parents, which is actually number one, right? Every one of those moments is a unique opportunity for ibadah, is a unique opportunity of worship. And we spend so much time in the hustle and bustle of life that we, we, we neglect people in our lives, right? This is an opportunity to reconnect, inshallah ta'ala, to reconnect strongly with the people that are around us that we're never, we're, well, that are supposed to be around us, but, um, you know, we, we don't spend enough time with. So use that as a unique opportunity, inshallah ta'ala. And the last thing that I'll say here uh, is what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said. As you're thinking about prayer, 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 prayer. Right and the congregational prayer, you know the Prophet sallam said, "Don't turn your homes into graveyards. Don't turn your homes into graveyards. Leave some of your prayer for your homes." What that means is that, typically speaking, even though we pray fard al maktuba, that which is written upon us in the masjids, the Prophet sallam encouraged us to pray our sunnahs at home, to pray our qiyam at home, to pray as much as we can at home. Okay. Um, why? So that we could have that proper uh, balance to where our sincerity is not compromised in the process of our public acts of good. And the Prophet Sallallahu warned us not to turn our homes into graveyards, to leave some of our prayers for the home. If there was any time where we could get regular with our sunnahs now, regular with our qiyam, regular with our tahajjud, regular with our prayers, regular with it all, inshallah ta'ala, and find a way to do this at home now, um, without someone watching us, without someone saying, just just to find a way to pray in solitude, to find a way to pray uh, with our families or by ourselves, and to enjoy the sweetness of that prayer, whether it's at night or during the day, just in our homes, what a great reward that would be. And if you look at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, I know that a lot of people are thinking about Taraweeh, we're not just thinking about Ramadan, uh, we're not just thinking about Jum'ah, we're thinking about Taraweeh. I know Taraweeh is on our minds. If you think about Taraweeh, right, in particular, remember that the Prophet ﷺ only prayed Taraweeh prayer in Jama'ah, in congregation, for the first few nights of Ramadan. And then the Prophet ﷺ started to pray at home because the Prophet ﷺ was worried that people would tack it on to the obligations of the religion. And so it, Taraweeh is literally just another word for Qiyam, for the night prayer in Ramadan. And the asr, the default of all night prayer is that it's better at home instead of in congregation. Taraweeh being the exception because of the idea, according to even some of the schools of thought, even in Ramadan, praying taraweeh at home is more rewardable. But the idea of keeping the masjids full and the idea of how we push each other more when we're praying in taraweeh, right? Uh, we're likely to pray longer when we're in jama'ah, when we're in congregation. We're likely to finish the Qur'an when we're in congregation. We're just more likely to hit our goals in terms of length. And so, uh, you know, if someone was to say, what's the reward or the benefit of praying at home versus praying in the masjid at night in Ramadan, uh, the, the, the breaker, the, the tiebreaker between those two, uh, you know, when you remove fiqh from the equation to get the technical answer, is, well, if you were going to spend 15 minutes praying tarawih at home and an hour praying in the masjid, then the hour wins every time. 
you know what? Switch it up, switch it up. Right now, we have a chance to establish a regimen of night prayer at home. And, you know, maybe some people, I know you guys are gonna miss the fundraisers in Ramadan. Don't worry, we will still be fundraising in Ramadan. <laughs> we'll just bring that online, inshallah ta'ala. But you're not gonna have people pestering you at night uh, maybe if, if we don't have the typical regimen with people that are standing up at night and asking you for sadaqah, who's who's removing the opportunity for sadaqah from you in Ramadan? Who's taking that away from you, that opportunity for charity, right? Of course you can still do charity. If In fact, it makes it more sincere. So we have to recognize that as difficult as the concept of isolation can be, isolation was what Imam Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah said, was, was, was the tranquility of the pious predecessors on earth. It's what the pious actually looked for. They longed for, for solitude. They longed for long moments of solitude where they could stay in that form of, they could stay in that form of remembrance, uh, stay in that form of, of uh, excelling and, and exceeding the next goals that they set for themselves in terms of their personal ibadat, in terms of their personal acts of worship. Uh, you know, and, and making sure that that's only for Allah because no one else was around as they were taking that next step and that next step and that next step. So you have opportunities for ibadah, you have opportunities for worship that are, you know, very, very specific to the time. And, you know, with the, with, with the way that we're kind of, you know, life is pausing on the outside, our ibadah should increase, our acts of worship should increase, inshallah. Use that time wisely, inshallah ta'ala. Use that time alone uh, to do special things, to connect to the one who never leaves you, whether you're quarantined or whether you are in the masjid or whether you're at work. Use that time to really connect deeply with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and, and uh, immerse yourself in that time. Enjoy that unique spiritual opportunity that you have right now, inshallah ta'ala. It's a special time for you. You know, flip it in terms of perspective. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to increase our closeness to him in these moments. Again, I, I just want to uh, emphasize that uh, those of you that are struggling even further, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be at your aid. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help you, activate us to be with you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us in empathy and gratitude and service and worship and spirituality and perspective and unite our hearts. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow this to be a moment where we can all come together as a community uh, with this equalizer of sickness and illness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to see each other in a different light, not just to connect to him in a different way, but to see each other in a different light, inshallah ta'ala. So your grudges, your, your, your difficulties, remove those inshallah ta'ala. Anything that reminds us of death. You know, I remember... When Kobe Bryant died, a lot of people were not happy that why are there so why is there so much emphasis on death? And, and subhanAllah, my opinion then, beyond just uh, all of the elements of that, anything that helps us remember the equalizer of death uh, more is a good thing for us if we're productive with it, right? Because it helps us live our lives better and it helps us long for the hereafter more. So all of that is good, inshallah ta'ala, if it makes us think more and it makes us do more, inshallah ta'ala. So use this as an opportunity to be reminded. Um, inshallah ta'ala, uh, tomorrow we're going to be, uh, if you follow Yaqeen Institute for Islamic Research, if you if you like the page, you'll see some information on a webinar that we'll be hosting tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, Sister Sara Sultan, Sister Najwa Awad and myself to talk about specifically uh, spirituality, anxiety, and practicality in these times, inshallah ta'ala. So it'll be at 1 p.m. Central tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, and you can look out for the information uh, that I'll put here uh, as well as on those pages. And um, again, you know, I, I pray that Allah Azza wa Jal uh, purify us of our sins through these moments and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to achieve the next level in our spiritual potential. Uh, inshallah ta'ala will be regularly doing different uh, activities, events, uh, or not events, activities. So you've got to change the terminology now, activities, webinars, uh, lectures, whatever whatever we can do, inshallah ta'ala, to stay connected in this time and to stay reminding each other with beneficial reminders, inshallah. We'll try our best to, uh, to move forward over the next uh, period. I don't want to say weeks or months um, because Allah knows how long this is going to be, but we'll try our best to be with you all, inshallah ta'ala, and try to connect and try to give us that spiritual thrust necessary with the month of Ramadan ahead of us. Allahumma balighna Ramadan. Allahumma balighna Ramadan. Allahumma balighna Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to all see Ramadan 
and to be forgiven through Ramadan and to elevate ourselves in this Ramadan more than any Ramadan before. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our elderly. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala support our vulnerable. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use us for them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replace all of our losses with things that are better in this life and the next. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to increase in ibadah, in our khalwa, in our moments of alone time, more so, more so even, then when we do so in our social gatherings, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our masajid, may Allah azza wa jal re, uh, return us to his houses as soon as possible. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow this uh, virus to subside as quickly as possible, protect everyone uh, from its harm. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow our brothers and sisters, wherever they may be, who pass away due to this to, to be counted amongst the shuhada. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with the shuhada from Christ Church that we lost a year ago. And, and comfort their families in this difficult time as the one year uh, comes around. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to develop perspective and to act in accordance with that perspective um, in these times. Allahumma ameen. Again, a reminder, pray for rak'ahs. This was not khutbah al-jum'ah. This was the reminder that I planned to share uh, for khutbah al-jum'ah. Jazakumullah khayran to all of you for uh, tuning in. I hope inshallah ta'ala to see you next week at Jum'ah itself inshallah ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.